Welcome back to Franchise Football, everybody. I'm your host, Husker Eurocat, and today we're back home in the familiar surroundings of Mercedes-Benz Stadium to host the Carolina Panthers. And trading for Sam Darnold in the offseason with the Jets has turned out to be a very good deal for the Panthers, who now sit at 5-2 and two and are on top of the NFC South. The key for today's game will be stopping him and the number two halfback in the NFL, Christian McCaffrey, or at least slow him down a bit. Now for big news out of the Falcons' head office, let's go to Eurocat Baby. You're sure right about this being big, because at the direction of Coach Gill, the Falcons have been quite busy in taking advantage of trades since this is the last week they are allowed here in the NFL. First off, we have the Titans who requested halfback Cordero Patterson and gave up third round draft pick this season and both a third and a fifth round pick next season. That meant that Atlanta needed to find a replacement halfback and they found a four year vet in Brian Hill. It will be fascinating to see how he'll be able to fill the gap left by Patterson. Next, a deal was struck with Minnesota for left tackle Ezra Cleveland in return for left tackle Jake Matthews and a couple of day three draft picks. Right in, Grady Jarrett and some undisclosed draft picks have been traded to the Ravens for right in Justin Matabike. And if the Falcons didn't trade away enough veteran talent, middle linebacker Deion Jones and a couple of more undisclosed draft picks have been traded to the Bills for middle lineman Tremaine Edmonds. So going into this contest with the Panthers, the Falcons squad is going to look a lot different than in past weeks. Atlanta's goal was to unload some of their very exorbitant veterans contracts while trying to maintain a good deal of talent. And I for one think they've done that. The debate and ultimate validity of these trades will be tested during the rest of the season. And I thought that last week with the move to Geronimo Allison was bold. If these new players end up being the talent Atlanta hopes they are, it could change the Falcons' outlook for many seasons to come. But let's start with today's game. As far as I've heard, these players have been activated for this contest, so I think we need to be on guard for <laughs> whatever might happen. Have the Falcons made the correct choices, or will it turn out to be a blunder? Let's find out as we take you to the field in Mercedes-Benz Stadium here on the MMC Broadcasting Network. Rookie Shy Smith is back deep for the Panthers, and Young Way Koo gets us underway here in Atlanta. Smith is stopped at the 26, and that is where the Panthers will start. The handoff goes to McCaffrey, and he's to the 29. Second and seven. In motion is rookie tight end Tommy Tremble, and up the middle goes McCaffrey again. He's to the 34. That brings up third and three. And he does get the first down, barely breaks the plane of the sticks. And that gives Carolina a fresh set of downs. After a false start, the pass goes to Ertz over the middle. He gets to the 44, bringing up another third and three. The pass goes out to the right, and there is Fabian Moreau wrapping up David Moore. After a punt, it is the Falcons' turn from their own 10. The ball is given to Williams, and he is up through the middle and gets a six-yard gain. The pass this time goes out to the right side, complete to Hill, and he'll lose a couple. The pass this time goes to Allison, first down at the 25-yard line. Out of the shotgun, Ryan is back, has all day, and finally runs out of time. Left hand, Brian Burns gets to him, and now it's third and 18. 
The pass deep and incomplete intended for Russell Gage and broken up by Dante Jackson. The Panthers take over at midfield, complete over the middle. That is Smith with a first down to the 35. Out of the shotgun, Darnold finally runs out of time and he's sacked back at the, I believe it's gonna be the 44. Bringing up third and 19. Uh, check that, the 30, 43. And the pass goes over the middle to DJ Moore, but well short of the sticks. And that brings out Joey Sly. 52-yard field goal and through the uprights. Carolina takes the early lead. Now from the 25 out of the shotgun. The pass complete to Hurst. He has the first down out past the 35. And that brings the first quarter to an end. Now on third and four. Back to pass and completing it over the middle to Allison for the first down at midfield. So first and 10, Bryce Love gets the call. A five yard gain. And Williams takes it outside the numbers and gets to the 41. Third and one, Ridley takes it on the jet sweep over the left side and gets the first down. Now from the 42, banging his way forward is Puka Williams for a four yard gain. Up the middle for another run goes Brian Hill. Did he make the first down? Yes. At the 26 yard line, Puka Williams to the 20. And Pitts is down. Uh oh, he is being escorted to the locker room and this could be trouble for the Falcons. Now on second and five. Up the middle goes Brian Williams. First down inside the 15 yard line. He now has two rushes for 15 yards and possibly the Falcons have found themselves a solid replacement for Patterson. Another jet sweep from Ridley that gets three yards. The pass to Allison and rolls over the top of Denzel Perriman and into the end zone to put the Falcons up seven to three. As you see a lot of jubilation on the sideline, the <laughs> Falcons just are not used to being in the lead in these games. And McCaffrey up the middle to the 31 yard line. Second and four. A handoff, no, it's a play action pass. Darnold downfield and he connects. Robbie Anderson with the grab that gets the Panthers the first down. Out of the shotgun. Darnold back to pass. And going back further. Finally, he's taken down. Everson Griffin taking him down for a 14-yard loss. Now trying to make up that yardage. A pass over the middle to Anderson. Gets to past the 40-yard line. But still third and 13. Darnold nowhere to throw it to, and Griffin gets to him again. That takes us to the two-minute warning. The Falcons still up by four points. And, oh, my goodness, Aluakon, did you see the speed at which he came off the edge? Wow. So after that sack, it's third and 19. Given to McCaffrey, and he gets just a few. A punt with 36 seconds left. Ryan trying to make something happen. Connects with Russell Gage out at midfield. The pass this time. Lofted long and intercepted. Dante Jackson with the grab. And there's just nothing that Gage could do about that one. As you can see on the replay, 
Ryan just lofted that one up and Jackson got in the right position and grabbed that one for the interception and that takes us to halftime with your score seven to three Falcons. Now with a halftime update, let's go to Eurocat baby. With all the trades that have gone on this week within the Falcon organization, we've seen a very competitive first half. Unfortunately, their starting tight end, Kyle Pitts, who went out midway through the second quarter, has a hairline fracture in a couple of his ribs and may miss the next month recuperating. It'll now be up to backup Hayden Hurst to fill some very big shoes. By the way, in Coach Gill's efforts to revamp this Atlanta team, both offensive coordinator Henry Brock and defensive coordinator Jim Nichols have been replaced. The new OC is Seth Sutton and the new DC is Jackson Pierce. Each of them comes from a background a little more in tune with the direction that Coach Gill wants to take this team. It seems that at least the defense is playing at a much higher level in today's game. But I would venture to say it's a little early to make any snap judgments. The Panthers have only been able to manage 36 yards of offense here in the first half. Have they made enough adjustments to push themselves to a win? Stay tuned to find out because the second half is coming up next. Welcome back to Mercedes-Benz Stadium for continued coverage of the Falcons' first game with the Panthers this season. While neither team has been able to put up many points on the board, we're looking at a defensive battle here, folks. Can either team have a breakout performance? Let's find out. The Falcons take the first possession here in the second half, and you see the numbers on Matt Ryan 8 of 12 for only 58 yards. That shows you how well the defenses are playing. And Gage takes it for the first down out past the 35. After a holding penalty, the pass goes to Allison. And he picks up a few. It's still second and 14. Ryan Chased out of the pocket, running up the right side, sideline and out of bounds. This is still third and nine. The pass is incomplete over the middle. So possession goes back to the Panthers, starting at the 31-yard line. Oh, and uh, McCaffrey got hit hard on that one. It's still an eight-yard pickup. Darnold finds McCaffrey out of the backfield. A lot of yardage into Falcon territory and out of bounds for the first down at the 41. Second and nine play. Adrian Peterson, the longtime Viking, takes it inside the 40. Pass over the middle to Smith for the first down. He takes it all the way to the 31. McCaffrey up the middle. Gets a four-yard gain, third and six. Darnold with the pass over the middle to McCaffrey, and he has the first down inside the 15, or else they're going to mark him there. Darnold over the middle, completes this one to Anderson. At the five. Now first and goal. Darnold throws this one out of the side of the end zone. Couldn't find anybody open. Back again. Let's it fly. And A.J. Terrell makes the interception in the end zone. And that stops the threat by the Panthers to take the lead in this football game. DJ Moore, the intended target, and he just didn't have the height advantage that Terrell does. Puka Williams up the right side, and he's out to the 29. The handoff goes to Bryce Love, and he has the first down. The third quarter 
is in the books and no score. Still 7-3 Falcons. Out of the shotgun, Love gets it again. Up the middle for the first down, but there's the flag. And this one is coming back. Holding on Jonah Jackson. So the newly activated player gets a holding call in its first and 14. This pass is complete to Gage. He's outside the 40 for the first down. His third reception on the afternoon. And that gets a new set of downs for the Falcons. Ryan reversing his field and getting sacked by Hassan Reddick. That puts the Falcons in another hole, third and 17. Pass over the middle, complete to Allison. He has the first down inside Panther territory at the 44 yard line. Now second and 12. Pass complete to Hurst. He's inside the 40, third and five. Ryan alone in the backfield and can't complete the third down pass. After a Panther three and out, the Falcons have it again. Pass going long downfield and wow. That one bounces off of players' helmets until it finally goes out of bounds. Ryan. Back to pass and completes this one to Allison. He picks up the first down, and now the Falcons are in Panther territory. Completion going to Allison again. It picks up five yards. Williams up the middle, first down, and a lot more down to the 30-yard line. A first and 10 in Scoring range for the Falcons. And Hassan Reddick gets to Ryan yet again. Third and 18. A short pass out of the backfield. And that one will bring on Youngway Koo. And the field goal is off to the left. Now from their own 41-yard line. Fake handoff, Darnold back to pass, throws downfield, and it's broken up. Backup cornerback, Avery Williams getting a hand on it. Darnold passes short to McCaffrey. He gets it out to midfield for a nine-yard pickup, and that takes us to the two-minute warning. Third and one. Darnold throws downfield, and it's incomplete intended for D.J. Moore. Terrell is there on the coverage. The Panther offense stays on the field, and Kaminsky gets a sack. And a face mask is going to negate that sack and give the Panthers a first down inside Falcon territory at the 43. Darnold back to pass, throws deep, and it is incomplete intended for Robbie Anderson. Darnold back to pass, throws short to McCaffrey. He gets it to the 40-yard line. That still leaves third and seven. And it's intercepted. Kendall Sheffield at the 20-yard line. Saves the day for the Falcons. He reads the slant pattern perfectly. Robbie Anderson has no chance at the ball. And that brings the Panther threat to an end. Now, with a minute 26 left in the game, Williams can't get it past the line of scrimmage and Hurst is injured but on the sideline looks to be okay. That could be a lot of trouble for the Falcons. If they were to lose him, Williams up the middle to the 30, brings on third and two, and oh, there's a flag. 
Gage caught the ball for the first down, but it looks like there's going to be a face mask tacked onto this. A.J. Bouye is the guilty party, and all the Falcons need to do is kneel this one down, and victory will be theirs. The Panthers not able to get it into the end zone in this contest lose by a score of seven to three. Although there was no scoring here in the second half, I thought this was a stellar performance. I was certain that Carolina was going to score late in the third quarter to take the lead, but A.J. Terrell came up with a huge interception battling with D.J. Moore in the end zone. I think you need to give credit to both defenses for the outcome of the game because holding the total offensive production to only 309 yards for the game is outstanding. It would seem to me that although throwing one pick in this game, Matt Ryan has turned the corner in at least his accuracy woes. That along with his improved passing percentage not hitting less than 68% of his passes in the last three weeks has helped the Falcons gain some momentum. Today's game, I would have to say, was won by an outstanding defensive effort. Two interceptions with the Panthers driving to take the lead in the game is clutch, to say the least. The new players on the team didn't have their name called much, and I would have expected that since they're still trying to learn a new system. But in the long run, with the inclusion of a new DC, I think they made the team a lot more concentrated. Although both defenses played with outstanding intensity, what an impact that the Falcons squad had. Was it just a fluke? Atlanta will have their chance to prove that they're for real next week when they travel to Lola to face the Saints. Admittedly, the Saints have not played up to their potential this season so far, but I would say that this is to be another great game. Gardner Minshew is, well, <laughs> he's trying his best to lead his team to victory, and having a back like Alvin Kamara helps immensely. I don't feel that Kamara can be stopped, but if he can be contained, the Falcons may have a real shot at walking out of Caesars Superdome with a win. Well, that's going to do it for this episode of the Atlanta Falcons franchise on the MMC Broadcasting Network. Atlanta, despite activating talent their very first week in camp, were able to put together an outstanding effort and come away with a win today. The defense performed very well, but can the offense with newly acquired talent halfback Brian Hill and left guard Jonah Jackson get the upper hand on a very talented New Orleans defense? To see what happens in this rival game, be with us next week, and until then, for Eurocat Baby and the rest of the crew, this is Husker Eurocat saying so long for now and have a good day, everyone.